I've had this video on my list for quite a while, but I've been putting off doing it because I don't have any good graphics to show you as examples, what I would consider advanced graphics. And the reason why is that generally no one is doing advanced graphics, so I don't have an example to show you. And this meant to do this video, I would need to sit down and hand draw three or four examples of what I consider to be advanced graphics to show you, to prove to you that we need to do better. This morning I thought, look, why don't I just sit down, spend a couple of hours, draw out one example, and if you guys really like this video and I get more likes than usual, then maybe I will do some follow-up videos and I will draw out a few more examples. But before I get to showing you the example, I think it's important that we first start off and discuss why our graphics have not improved for the last 20 years. I think it's really important to discuss that and if I can convince you that this is what's been happening, then maybe we can all try a bit harder. I started in the BMS industry in 1998. So when I look at a brand new modern day graphic, it's very obvious to me that that's exactly what we did 20 years ago. So if you have less than say, 10 years experience, it might not be obvious to you. You look at the graphic and you think, yep, that's what we've been doing. You don't realize that what you've just created is exactly what we had pretty much 20 years ago. Sure, we have, um, you know, we have nicer colors and, you know, we have better animations. The graphics look more beautiful, HTML5, blah, blah, blah. So sure, the graphics look nicer, no argument there. But generally the information that you see on that graphic and the way that you navigate in between systems, in between pages, that generally hasn't really changed very much. Let me tell you why I think our graphics haven't needed to improve or why they haven't improved. In the construction phase, we build those graphics specifically to help us commission the BMS and witness the BMS. So there's the graphic, heat and cooling valves, temperatures, sensors, CO2, the dampers, and we commission all the inputs and outputs, we make sure that AHU is working, and then we present that to the customer or the consultant, look here, the heating cooling valves are working, we're controlling to temperature, we're controlling to pressure, it's all working. We create graphics during the construction phase simply to help us commission the system and present it at the end of the job. Then for the next 20 years during BMS maintenance, our service technicians use those graphics as part of their periodic preventative maintenance contract. What I like to call walking around and looking for broken things. So we look at the graphics and we see, are we controlling to temperature? Are we controlling to pressure? You know, we check the heating and cooling valves. We drive the valves open and closed. We drive the dampers open and closed. We do it as part of preventative maintenance. Generally, in my opinion, nobody is sitting down and creating advanced graphics to assist with complex optimization and diagnosing faults, troubleshooting, understanding the performance of the system. We're not trying to understand how this system is interacting with that system. We're not trying to understand that as we optimize these systems, it's negatively impacting on other systems. We're not doing that at all. Let me show you three examples of very old air handlers. Let me show you three very old air handlers, and let's see how different they are from our current modern day graphics. So in this first example, I'm pretty sure that's an old Johnson Controls BMS system. I remember that old sort of blue purple background. I quite like this old graphic actually, but as you can see there, we've got a supply and return fan, we've got heating, cooling coils, economy cycle dampers on the left. On the right, we have our supply temperature, supply pressure controls. There's a box up there with some parameters that we can adjust for the temperature set point reset strategy. But generally, not that different from what you'd expect to find on a modern day graphic. In the second example, I think this is an old Honeywell BMS, really old graphic this, but again, it looks quite similar to the one before it. Dampers on the left, supply fan, heating, cooling coils, supply temperature and pressure control. There's a bit more detail here around a supply air pressure reset strategy. We've got return air enthalpy and outside air enthalpy as part of our economy cycle control. But just the look of that graphic and how you see it, very similar to what we do nowadays. 
In this third and final example, I think this is an old Schneider or a TAC maybe BMS. I'm sure some of you might recognize this, some of you older people. But again, you know, supply fan in the bottom, return fan in the top, dampers in the left, supply temperature, pressure resets. So this graphic is great for in construction phase to make sure the BMS is all commissioned and then presenting it to the customer. It's also good during maintenance time just to diagnose that it's basically working. But I think you'll agree with me that looking at these three graphics and looking at three modern day air hand unit graphics, they're not that different. Not a lot has changed other than the beautifulness of the graphic. So I just drew my example out. It took a long time, more than an hour. And I've just realized I made a bit of a mistake because I, I sat down and drew out you know, a chiller optimization example, but I actually showed you three examples of air handling units. So what I really should have done was I should have drawn out an air handling unit optimization page. So that's a bit disappointing, but I think you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. Now, before I show it to you, this is not gonna be perfect. It's, it's a concept of what we should be doing. I haven't done this in a real job before. If I did a real job before and we were tuning this and tuning in the pumps and the temperature and the cooling towers, I'd probably tweak this graphic a bit. It would improve. So just take on board, it's not perfect. There will be mistakes on this graphic. I've just sketched it out pretty quick. Let me run through it. So I'm gonna just like apologize up front. I'm being a bit lazy here. I really should do a screen share and then have my mouse and, and click on things and talk through it nicely. It's just that to do that, I've got to synchronize the audio. There's the screen share. It's just gonna take me much longer to do that. This is just a quick YouTube video. It's not a, a training course or anything like that. So. Just bear with me around, I'm being a bit lazy here. If you're doing chill water optimization on site, you have to have a page like this. And if you don't have a page like this, I'd sort of propose that you're not doing optimization properly. Let's run through it quick. So on the top left here, I have, it says chillers. I have all the points associated to the chiller staging. You know, staging on capacity and you know, I have each individual chillers, three chillers. I have the COP for each chiller the electrical power consumption and the kilowatts of refrigerant, the kilowatts of cooling. The green dot is the chiller's running. The gray dot is it's not running. The red dot is it's in fault. And then I've totalized the total chill water COP for the three chillers. The COP for all three chillers totalized and the kilowatts of cooling power. There's also a little a trend button. If you click on that trend button, it will take you to a trend of all that information. The COPs, outside air temperature, kilowatts, you know, the stage up set points, when you staged up, blah, blah, blah. In the bottom left, I have the chill water pumps, three pumps, one's running. I have the speed and the kilowatts of electricity, each of those three. And then below that, I have all the parameters for the system pressure reset, the totalization of the cooling flags, the stage up, stage down flag. This is similar to ASHRAE 36. And I have the supply temperature reset strategy. And a trend there, if you click on that trend, it shows you all of that data in a trend. On the top right, I've got the cooling tower fans. One cooling tower fan is running. I have all the set points that you adjust for the optimization of the condenser water temperature. And then below that, I have the condenser water pumps and the optimization points associated to adjusting the speed of the condenser water pumps. Now in the middle, I've got total system performance. So I've added up the kilowatts of electricity for each component, the chillers, the pumps, the fans, and then I have the total kilowatts of refrigerant or cooling. And I can therefore calculate the COP of the entire chill water system. Outside of temperature and humidity, and there's a trend there. If you click on that trend, it shows you the COP of the entire system. Why this is important is that as I'm tweaking, for example, the chill water temperature set point, I'm optimizing that. So I'm slightly raising the chill water temperature set point. As I'm doing that, I'm seeing the COP of my running chiller improve. The COP goes higher and the COP of the three chillers, that COP trim will go higher. But obviously as I'm raising that temperature, it means I'm using more pumping power because I have less cooling capacity available to me. So on this page, I can actually see that as I raise the chiller temperature set point, I can see the chiller COP improving for the three chillers. I can see I'm using more pumping power and then I can see the overall COP of the whole system. So. Maybe when I go from six degrees Celsius to seven degrees Celsius, the overall performance is good. But if I go higher, 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 eventually I'm pumping a lot of pumping power. Maybe I'm not getting the COP out of the whole system. 
as I'm adjusting the condenser water set point reset strategy, and I'm seeing the COP of the chillers increase, I can also see the queen tower fans are running harder. So with this page, it allows me to tweak different components of the chill water systems optimization. And on one page, I can see how I'm negatively impacting another part of the system. And because I have the total COP of the entire system, I can see where the sweet spot is. This is something that I don't think a single person is doing very well. Like serious, I've never seen a page like this in my life before. But how can we not have this page if we're doing chill water optimization? We always look at the COP of the chillers. We never ever consider the entire system. Think about how much the whole world has evolved in visualization and interacting with users. Like think about mobile phone applications, you know, online banking, food ordering, Uber, Amazon. All these industries have innovated over the last 20 years and have learned how to engage with people. In our industry, we have not done that. I would just guess that our visualization and interacting with the users through graphics, alarms and trends, I don't know, maybe we've improved three years in 20 years. It's not, it's really, really bad. And I don't know like how we're getting away with this. Actually, we're not getting away with it because the technology companies who know how to build an engaging interface, they are stealing bits and pieces of the BMS industry. We've discussed this at length and they're stealing our people as well because our industry, it's a bit shit. So like, why haven't we improved? I'm gonna generalize here and probably annoy a few people, but BMS companies, at least in the region where I live, BMS companies are all equally average. No one company is really innovating above the rest or, or just trying to be a flippin' hero. No one's doing that, everyone's just the same. If one company started to innovate and do amazing things and actually think about who's using the system, the BMS, other than the commissioning technicians and the service technicians, and they did that, they would win all the work and they would force everybody else to stop being lazy and pick their game up. We need to train our engineers in advanced topics. See in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, which was a bit upside down, and to be honest, this is why I didn't want to go down this road of this, this video topic. This was a very complicated video for me. It's chewed up way too much on my Saturday morning. Um, if I get more than the usual 20 likes for a video, very sad for me that. Um, maybe I'll create more of, the, of this series. Otherwise, I'm gonna get onto something a bit more easier to talk about. But if you like this video, hit the like button and because that's the feedback I get from you. If you like videos, oh, they like that video, I'll do more of those videos. Maybe I'll draw out an, an example for an air handler unit advanced graphics page. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.